patient of glioblastoma multiforme, the most dangerous type of brain tumor in the world. Every time he goes to the oncologist, the oncologist says, okay, you have six months left. Then they say, they have three months left. Then they said, okay, I don't know how you are still alive, taking these sweet sugar pills. They started going back to the oncologist and saying, I am feeling better. The oncologist said, we can't be feeling better, but okay, if you, if you feel, you are feeling better. After three months, they go back and they, they, they said, I am feeling better. The oncologist says, gets a little astonished, says, it is a medical impossibility that this person is feeling better. Let us do an MRI. They do an MRI and they find that the tumor, which was 5 centimeters, has become 3 centimeters. They, they look at this person as if he is a, he's a medical curiosity, because he is not supposed to improve against all odds, he is improving. And then, when this happened, suddenly the patient realized, oh my god, it was 3 and it's not, no, it's, it was 5 centimeters, now it is 3 centimeters. Then they got in touch with us, saying, look, I found your paper on the internet and I started the, taking those medicines that you had prescribed and I am feeling better and my MRI has shown a, a regression. Tell us what to do next. We started receiving hundreds and hundreds of mails from all over the world of people who were taking our protocols without anyone's advice and the getting benefit. So, that really, you know, the Ruta swept the world. Like, we are now treating patients in more than 80 countries of various different types of diseases, but primarily brain tumors with Ruta and Calcarea first. My name is Prati Banerjee. I am a fourth generation homeopath. See, on an average day in our clinic, we get about a thousand to twelve hundred patients. See, of this thousand to twelve hundred patients that we treat, about fifteen to twenty percent is cancer. About one hundred fifty to two hundred cases of cancer every day we get in our clinic. This has actually turned us almost into cancer specialists in the in, in the eyes of the NCI or in the eyes of the the NIH, but actually we are not cancer specialists. We are general practitioners who who have a sort of family practice. You know, it's like a clinic where we people from any any walk of life, any suffering from any disease, can come and see us. Homeopathy is a system of medicine which is completely the reverse of conventional treatment, in the sense that homeopathy is a system of medicine which teaches that the person falls sick only if the vitality in that individual malfunctions. If the vitality malfunctions in, in a particular person, the person falls sick and the disease becomes stronger and the Im immunity is not able to resist. So, illness is the result of that. If there is a tumor in the body, we give a medicine to reduce the tumor. If there is a tumor in the body, conventionally they want to remove it. So, when they remove it, why was the tumor there in the first place? The tumor was there for some inherent defect in the immune system. That defect is not corrected. They remove the tumor. The body feels the absence of it and creates another one or it recurs. So, that is the basic difference between the two systems of medicine. One tries to uh, strengthen the immunity and try to make the person cure themselves. The other tries to kill the disease and try to cure. Clinical research using patient data of patients treated by classical homeopathy is a scientific no no. Because classical homeopathy has no specific medicine for the patient. When a person comes to you to talk about their disease, 
the classical homeopath will question that person intensively and for maybe it may take two hours to, to record one patient's symptoms. And then the classical homeopath will try to match the, the symptoms of the individual to the symptoms of an individual medicine. When you take one patient to five different classical homeopaths and each of them eminent physicians, five out of five of them will prescribe different medicines for the same patient. So, then you start to wonder you know, so which is the simulimum, which is the actual medicine for the patient, who is the right one, because it is practically impossible to arrive at the simulimum. Modern day science requires replicability. You show 10 cases of tuberculosis treated with the same disease, 8 cases become well, 2 do not, perfectly ok. But you show 10 cases of tuberculosis treated with 10 different medicines and even if they all become ok, where is the science behind it? What we did basically, our family is that we started to change the approach from being classical where the which is actually totally subjective on the part of the physician, which is totally subjective on the part of the patient to a more objective type of treatment, where there is a diagnosis done, a medical test is done to confirm the diagnosis a treatment is done based on the diagnosis, that treatment through experience, through giving 1000 patients the same medicine for the same disease, when you come to realize that yes, it helps the majority of them, that becomes the Banerjee protocol for that particular disease. Not only is it given in, is the medicine fixed, the potency that it is prescribed in, that means that dilution is also fixed, the dosage pattern is fixed. So, a specific disease gets a specific medicine in a specific potency in a specific dosage pattern. So, this is the Banerjee protocol. You see, the patient does not go to a doctor to do homeopathy or conventional medicine or Chinese herbal medicine or anything of that sort. The patient has only one idea in their mind when they are going to a doctor that is that this person is going to make me well. So, if the doctor loses sight of that or thinks that this patient has come to me to do homeopathy, then the doctor is actually not in sync. The first aim, the first desire of the doctor is to be able to benefit that patient, is to help the patient overcome their suffering. If it, it, if it requires any form of treatment, the doctor should, should be big, big enough or should have a depth of human feeling enough to recommend that homeopathy has many advantages. Number one advantage is the medicines are so dilute that they are absolutely safe and non-toxic. They can give, be given without any hesitation to ladies expecting a baby. They can be given without any hesitation to a newborn child, because the level of dilution goes into 1 is to million. So, safe, non-toxic. easily administrable, efficient and you know it is a clear winner if you think about it and economical, it is the price is really very low and extremely affordable. So, this makes homeopathy the winner.
we have done a lot of work in different premier institutions around the world. One of the studies that we did was on brain tumors at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. We were working with the head of cellular biology and genetics, uh, Dr. Sen Patak, with a medicine called Ruta and Calcarea FOS, which we routinely use for tumors of the brain. He did a chromosomal analysis of cells treated with our medicines and those treated without. He found that you know at the end of every chromosome is a is a is a powerhouse called the telomere. This telomere bri uh, shines brightly when the organism's vitality is great or the or organism is healthy and did we become shorter and shorter as we grow older or as our immune system gets less and less. He found that these, this medicine actually in those cells which are cancerous, it selectively targets the telomere of the cancer cell, e erodes it and wipes out the telomere thus killing the cell. How it does it is still a question to be answered, but it does it. It erodes the telomere and it kills the cancer cell. But the beauty of this is that when this study is done with normal cells, with cancer cells, it selectively targets the cancer cells and kills only the cancer cells while making the normal cells grow. This is a basic science test done on in the lab on a cell culture which showed that it improved the lymphocytes while actually killing the cancer cells. So, intelligent medicine. What we have is retrospective patient data as of now. We have over 20,000 recorded cases of cancer which who have visited our clinic they have been recorded not according to clinical trial norms, but according to a patient, a doctor's patient database. That much of information in one place about cancer is and that also treated by a, a system of medicine which is not conventional, is not available anywhere else in the world. These medicines are high, highly effective. We have seen their efficacy in our clinics. So, even if we shout that it, it is efficient, you do not need to hear us shout. You can visit our clinics where there is a footfall of 1000 to 1200 patients a day. As Abraham Lincoln said, you can fool some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. So, for, for 50 years if we are maintaining a clinic where every day the patient number is going up and it has reached 1000 patients a day, that must tell you that should tell any person that there must be something working here otherwise why would the patients come. There is a lot to be answered still and we are doing basic science experiments in different institutions. But our, our theory, actually not, it is not our theory by the way, it is Hahnemann's theory. 200 years ago he said it that the vital force or the immune system is what needs to be boosted up and these medicines work by boosting the immunity. That has been our contention for the last 200 years since Hahnemann said it and today we have been happily able to show that yes, those medicines actually boost the immunity by improving the normal cells while killing the cancer cells. Mm.